Hello, leader, and welcome back to the Fierce Factor podcast. It's your host, Kaylee, here, and I am on a mission to help 100 inspiring and intentional women cross the next million-dollar milestone in their business this year. And in order to do that, I have to be supremely intentional about who we link arms with, meaning if someone comes to us and is like asking questions about how to simply stay status quo, they are like likely not going to be the right fit for our community. And I'll tell you, our team has become like ninja, (laughs) like ninja about recognizing clues as really leading indicators of success, even from the very first call we have with prospective clients. And it's not that I believe there isn't a piece of the pie for everyone or that someone who is building slower than another doesn't have what it takes to cross one, two, or even six or 12 million in revenue. But instead, it's really about a mindset. It's about an ability to see a vision and a willingness to make sacrifices and stay focused and disciplined to achieving that goal. And that's really what I want to talk to you about today. You know, so often we get sidetracked by what others are doing or we begin to measure our value or our achievements by what's like going on around us, you know, especially if you notice if you've gone to a conference and you look around and you're like, ah, it's like a sea of people, you know, doing all these amazing things and you feel like, oh, I've got this idea and that idea and I got to do this, I got to do that. And, you know, we get tempted to compare ourselves to essentially the average, you know, What is going on around me? What is the average person doing? But I can tell you right now that the women who come through our programming are not looking to be average. There's nothing average about them at all, in fact. (laughs) And I'm inspired this week to really revisit a past episode I recorded back in January of 2021 because the core message is still so relevant today, even as we are experiencing 40-year inflation highs and tiptoeing into an economic recession in the United States. And the bottom line is success will be even more attainable for the women who double down now on themselves. Now is not the time to pull back, but instead invest in getting really strategic about the process of growth. And when we ask questions like, what's the average, right? We're subconsciously benchmarking our success by someone else's. And this is not a recipe for successful growth. This is a recipe for staying status quo. And because you are a Fierce Factor listener, I know that you aren't just looking to be another me too business, but instead you are mission driven, you are committed to making an impact, and you are determined to do it your own damn way. So as a little bonus for you today, I am resharing episode 41, why leaders ignore national averages. And my final update PS before we dive in is that we are kicking off our next six week business accelerator course for this week. Oh my gosh, it is actually in a few days. So hurry up and jump in if you want to master the skills to catapult your business in 2022. You can learn more about our program. It's called Confidence to Scale. And you can also apply at www.klcconsultants.com forward slash scale. Okay, leader, without further ado, I bring to you why leaders ignore national averages. Enjoy. Hi there. Welcome to the Fierce Factor podcast. I'm your host, Kaylee Lindholm. And I think it's time for us women to shift the conversation in business and step into our feminine leadership to do the most iconic work the aesthetic industry has ever seen. Each week, I'll be bringing a powerful dose of strategy, sarcasm, solutions, and sass that will rev up your creativity and ignite your brilliance as you link arms with me along our shared path of personal and professional growth in 20 minutes or less. Let's go. Hello there, Fierce Leaders. Welcome to episode 41 of the Fierce Factor podcast. I'm your host, Kaylee Lindholm, and I just poured myself a glass of wine because I've got quite an episode for you today. So settle in (laughs) because I'm super excited to dive into this topic with you. Why leaders ignore national averages. So I have been racking my brain, y'all, to remember a time when someone called me and asked me to help them become average. 
But if I had a dollar for every time I'm asked, what do most people do, Kaylee? I'd be a gajillionaire. I am routinely asked by clients and prospective clients, you know, where their business should be. If you're a high performer, you know who your competitors are. And I am no psychologist, but I think we were conditioned to compete since we were children, right? Rankings on tests, times in relay races, who gets the bigger ice cream cone. We're programmed to compete. We're programmed to compare. But the problem is when we fall back into this way of thinking as adults and business owners, we end up in a vicious cycle of comparison trap. And worse, we end up building a business that is stacked up against someone else's version of success. If you haven't listened to episode 11, you may want to cruise back and have a listen to The Cure for Comparison-itis, where I dress techniques to help you pull through this vicious trap of comparison. But listen, don't beat yourself up. I'm not creating this podcast because you're the only person or I'm the only person who's had these feelings. This is totally normal. I literally have these conversations on a regular basis. And by the way, I have had to coach myself through similar feelings. And so that is one of the reasons why I feel like I am qualified to share this perspective with you today. So what are some of the main questions around comparison? Well, I hear questions all the time. Some most commonly like, what do practices similar to mine produce in revenue? What is the average comp plan or pay scale for a specific type of employee? What kind of membership program works most for practices? Where should my business be? What is the national average for XYZ? Totally common questions, totally normal to wonder. But I thought I'd take this opportunity to share my answer to these common questions with you here and unpack the conversation around comparison and how it can impede your ability to differentiate your practice, to stand out from the competition, and in some cases result in chasing the wrong metrics altogether, metrics that are not linked to defining your own success. So here we go. Number one. Success is subjective, not objective, meaning you will uniquely define your own success. It's likely that this will be a combination of financial results, your ability to practice how you want to, to treat high quality patients who appreciate your value, work with passionate staff, have low stress levels, have a work-life balance create meaningful impact in the world, and have a cash reserve that can self-multiply. However you define it, success will be unique to you. Number two, there is no benefit to comparison with other practices. Comparison is typically done using objective measurements, i.e. revenue, number of patients, schedule, capacity, profit, size of the practice, etc. The problem is none of these data points tells the whole story. Taken out of context, these metrics are simply useless. For example, Is a practice that generated 20% more revenue than yours doing better than you? What if that other practice is filled with staff drama, has significant patient and staff turnover, and is up to its eyeballs in debt? Is it still more successful than your practice? Number three, comparison to average is useless. First of all, you're not average. We can always find some practices that are generating more revenue, more profit, seeing more patients, have more Instagram followers, and we can always find someone that is generating less. Are you therefore better than those below you and worse than those above you? Number four, comparison to competitors leads you to focus on the wrong things. So this is sort of my point. When you're asking questions about what are they doing, what are most people doing, or looking on social media at somebody else's practice and seeing what they're showing you, you know, you're not seeing the whole picture. And by the way, identifying the superficial metrics of a competitor as being better than yours puts you in a mindset of lack and scarcity. In an effort to get bigger, faster, busier, you end up copying the work that they do, which at best will leave you with a copycat version of their practice. P.S. This is where commoditization comes from. Number five, 
Seek inspiration, not competition. So rather than comparing numbers, look for peers or pro tip, look for companies or organizations outside of aesthetics that inspire you. Who has built a business they love? Who has incredible patients or clients who love them? What aspects can you emulate in your practice? What is their process? Where is their focus? What are they thinking about? What kinds of questions are they asking? Okay. Number six, compete with yourself. Focus on achieving your goals. Do you have a clear vision of success for your practice? What does it look like? Where are you now? What can you do to move toward your goal? How are you getting better or closer? I listened to a podcast this morning with Mark Cuban, who was talking about wanting to have blood work done on a regular basis. Apparently, there was some controversy around this, but he wanted to have blood work done to really establish his baselines for his health metrics so that if he did get sick, he could really measure, monitor how he had been advancing or how certain elements of his blood had changed or his values or lab work had changed from one measurement to another. Apparently, there's some controversy around this, but the point is he didn't want to be measured if he was to get sick. He didn't want to be measured to an average white 50-year-old male. He wanted to be measured against himself. And I think that's the only way to think about building a business. That's the only way to think about what membership programs, what staff, what compensation, you know, all of the things related to what's going to drive your business is going to be unique to you, to your success measurements, to the type of business that you're building, to the people that you want to have, the people you want to be around every day. That's totally unique to you. And if you're not focused on that, if you're not focused on looking internally, it's so easy to get caught up in measuring yourself against what somebody else tells you that you should be at. It's just, I have such... (laughs) I have such an aversion to this whole national averages or comparison game because I think that that is the single really most detrimental thing that has I have seen throw practices off of their game, you know, staying focused on their own success. And the bottom line is success is individual. Don't let someone's statistics pull you into a manufactured system of comparison. When you make decisions from a place of insufficiency, you risk rushing, making impulse decisions, and plugging holes, which ultimately creates a boomerang effect of problems, ultimately robbing you of joy and richness of creativity, impact, and autonomy. And as the great past president Teddy Roosevelt so nobly stated, comparison is the thief of joy. And it is my wish for you, fierce leaders, that you find deep joy in what you do. And as you advance blissfully into your multi-million dollar enterprise or you advance into one day a week of work sipping a pina colada on an island in your bikini and or whatever your dream is, you do it while singing karaoke with the great Frank Sinatra echoing, I did it my way. (laughs) P.S. If you would like to take this conversation to the next level or you'd like to receive weekly updates on events, free trainings, resources, and good old-fashioned edutainment, you can subscribe to my email list at www.klcconsultants.com forward slash join. Thank you for tuning in today. I appreciate you letting me have my little rant about national averages and I hope you enjoyed the show and I will see you next week. Thank you for joining me for this episode of The Fierce Factor. If you enjoyed the show, please make sure you subscribe so you can automatically get new shows every week. I'd also love it if you left us a review. And come join the conversation online. If you're an aesthetic industry owner, operator, or leader, please join my free Facebook group, The Tribe of Fierce Aesthetic Leaders, a community of ambitious, purpose-driven professionals who collaborate and share best practices for growth in business and life. I'm honored you tuned in.